chapter coming to you from east nashville tennessee here at my house uh man thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel and sticking with it I'm, i promise i'm going to try to get more consistent here um playing the dano caster strat the tremolo uh um, version of this the one that was sitting closest to, to my chair here today um that was a little uh kind of improv version i guess here of uh no extra charge for mistakes um of a song I recorded on uh, my first record called Monkey Bars. And so uh, I don't know what time signature that's in. Thank God I don't have to count it. But um, anyway, just based on a little riff there and uh, just tried to solo around it a little bit. But um, it, you, it's kind of cool to use that second position on the Strat to get that more, per, uh, actually the uh, one, two, three, fourth pos position on the Strat to get that more kind of percussive um, attack. It's kind of hard to do that on the telly, but that, that gives you that cool percussive attack. You know, um, I wanted to show you guys a little something here real quick, um, just to give you an update uh, before I get into that. Um, everything's going great here. The weather's been nice. Um, hope you guys are doing great. Uh, I do change clothes every once in a while. No black t-shirt. Of course, I have one on under here, but, uh, you know, been out running errands all day and stuff and just uh, wanted to get a video in to you. Um, and this is fun. I have a blast doing this and it's developing into such a great guitar community around the world. Uh, there is a bunch of Artist Works updates uh, and promotions that they're doing now. So a great time to check out Artist Works. All those links are below, uh, as well as my four tiers now of uh, private lessons, Skype and Zoom, in person in Nashville, and two different tiers of the guitar immersion experience. And so definitely check that out. New website coming soon. Just working on a couple last minute videos to wrap that up and that should be launching real soon the merch is out new t-shirts and all that stuff check that out um anyway yeah just rocking along looking forward to doing these oats dates um john oats and guthrie trap duo uh show that we've got which is just such a blast we're sitting there playing two acoustic guitars um mic'd up really nicely great acoustic tone and then um telling stories uh you know playing songs i'm doing some songs by myself He's singing a bunch of uh, great songs and just a lot of fun to see that show and be a part of it. And so, um, 
and to share that music with you guys. Uh, I know some of you guys are coming to some shows. I've been getting some messages and stuff, but check that out. Um, other than that, man, just enjoying life in Nashville. The past couple of weeks have been very productive, but I've had some free time to do the things that I love to do, you know, have coffee, have some meetings, have some phone calls, played on that Chet uh, tribute record. That was cool. Been um, gearing up to do some different projects with different people and then doing my, eventually doing my own solo uh, projects, some acoustic stuff, some electric stuff. Hopefully that's going to be recorded uh, in and around April, uh, just, you know, uh, schedules permitting and all that, but some exciting stuff coming up towards the end of the year, uh, going to Spain and then going to, um, South of France around September and October, and then November doing a full blown tour of Germany with, uh, John Oates, me and, uh, Beth Hart and her band. We'll be doing all the cities in Germany and then some in Switzerland. And then, man, that'll be wrapping up. That'll be into, you know, towards the end of this year. So man, the, the year is getting pretty mapped out. Um, but there is a bunch of uh, months in between where uh, we can do the guitar immersion experiences. So check that out. Um, basically, that's a full or half day of mirroring uh, my, what I consider a pretty exciting life here in Nashville. Lots of fun running into characters every day and, and just going and doing a bunch of fun stuff in and around town. I've lived here so long. I know everybody and, and I know my, my way around really good. I know where to eat, know where to drink, know where to hear music and, and you know, all the things in between. Fill in the blanks there. So um check that out but anyway i wanted to this is not related to sometimes the lesson does is not related to the opening uh intro uh improv section or whatever so kind of back to the blues thing i want to show you guys working out of this uh just an a bar chord then the 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 a shape uh four chord d chord and then the, i might get into the five chord a shape if you break that into triads or these or even like uh the the second half of this chord this bottom part or uh, top part rather there's your triad right so if i take that if i take that into the triad i'm really not moving much to get to the four chord you know the the, the a is staying your five there so that's how we're starting to get to, to look at these sections and, and compartmentalize this stuff and break it down to where we're really getting a lot out of these triads triad so if I do this there's my a there's a7 that a7 is resolving to the to the major third of that triad in D right D to D7 the D7 note the flat 7 of the D chord resolves back up a half step to the third of the major third of the A chord. So you don't have to know all that if you just see it and hear it is the most important part. If I go to E, there's E7. It's moving right back down to the major third of A. But you don't have to sit there and try to figure that theory out if you just know the chord shape. So that's how this stuff starts to work. So if I'm playing a blues and I go A to A7, I want to target that major third of the four chord to get to make it sound like I'm changing chords to play over the chord change. So if I do this, I'm going to walk up from the E note to that to that four so if I'm playing then there's my mixolydian in D 
Right, so letting an E. D. A. I'm jumping ahead, but those notes are the ones that you need to really start looking at. So if I go here. Turn this treble down just a hair. So, uh. So I'm note leading up to that third. Right, so there's a line. I'm walking. Right back to A. So that's how we're targeting these notes. If I go to E. See why I don't sing, but you got to sing these with it. Like I said on the last video, you know, the getting the rhythm and the phrasing in your head. Same lick over both chords five and four, E and D, E. So that's what really marks these dominant seven chords is the, I hate to say it, but the Mixolydian mode, I call it the dominant seven scale, the major scale with the flat seven. So if I'm doing something like this, I'm, I'm visualizing that triad, D, D7, D7 here, the full, the nine, go to E. As they, as your vocabulary improves, these lines will keep getting longer and you, and then you're starting to create your musical vocabulary over these different chords. So that, you know, back to a uh, minor pentatonic and some flat seven thrown in there because there's my chord. So you don't want to just go, that's an arpeggio, but That's more of a line. It starts getting more complicated. Right over that nine chord. So I'm stealing from the A shape and, and the C shape over the nine chord because there's your major third. You're not playing it there, so. Chromatic. sounds and chord shapes, right? So again, that, that, that blues riff. I'm going five to four. Even if you just learned that line. over the A shape. Right into your 
your nine chord. You're just following that Mixolydian scale right down there, like the dominant seven scale. Sometimes I'm starting on the B string. And there it is back to A. So I'm always going back to that flat seven because by the time I've hit the major third, I don't want to keep playing major because it, it sounds, uh, it starts leap pulling you away from the nature of the dominant seven chord. So if I go, I'm going to go. It's like, same thing as that old riff. You know, uh, that's the same lick, rick, lick. I'm mixing these blue notes in with the major to make that dominant seven chord work. So again, one more time. I'm cueing off that flat seven G note the F sharp in D. Back to A. Back to E. Play some lines out of that scale in those arpeggios. Great turnaround. I think we covered some of that, but um, and then if you get into some of this BB King stuff up here around the C shape. Major pentatonic, and on the six. Ending on bending up from, from the B note up to the major third. A uh, minor pentatonic. But when you put that six in there, it brings it back. here but that's the idea so um i'm gonna leave with you leave you with that uh thanks for checking this out again just man it's been pretty crazy busy around here but like i said enough free time to kind of be able to get back into doing some of this stuff and thinking about some ways to kind of open some of this stuff up for you uh still trying to learn it myself and um thanks so much for the for the uh all the kind comments really appreciate it they do not go unread although i don't have time to respond to all of them personally they all go, they do not go unread, and I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you all so much. Check out the links below for everything that I'm doing uh, link-wise, and then um, just see you in a few days, man. Cheers, y'all. See you.